y'all don't mind Let's go back to a time We really used to have church We used to have a good time Praising the Lord the Spirit and the truth I love them old church That old brother Pick up that old hymn book and You knew exactly what he was going to say Sisters got happy Folks start patting their feet Clapping their hands and all of a sudden, he break off in a song, something like this. And I know it sounds good hearing all this stuff, but why does John say, whosoever transgress uh, and, and does what? And right. abideth not, literally means that whosoever transgress go past where he or she uh, has been uh, taught by a system or a belief when you transgress past something and abideth not in what? The doctrine, the doctrine of Christ uh, can't fall from grace. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ is all right with God because God knows your heart. Whosoever transgresseth uh, and makes anything they want to be a belief system in today's modern culture is all right with God. That's not what the Bible teaches. It says whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ have not God. Amen. Now I want you to stop just for a minute and ask yourself that once I don't know what the doctrine is, how can I profess to have God? Uh, if the Bible says that transgression puts one in a position that they don't have God, then how did you get grace? Because grace is in the doctrine of Christ. Amen. Now let me stop here scholastically and, and address the word doctrine because uh, there are some who argue that it is native and some say that it is genitive. Uh, meaning that it is not necessarily the laws of God, but talking about Christ. Uh, whether it's the laws of God or about Christ, they are one in the same thing. Am I right about it? it is, if you talk about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, what did the death, burial, and Je resurrection of Jesus Christ mean to those people in that day? Well, to a Jew who was born during the Mosaic dispensation, when Christ died on the cross, uh, the Mosaic law died on the cross also. Y'all ought to say amen. Uh, so that is the law of God replacing the law of Moses. Uh -huh. So whosoever transgress uh, concerning the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, thus the laws of Christ, he said, does not have Amen. I know that makes some of y'all feel funny. Y'all looking around. I, I don't know what you mean. Well, the problem is you don't know what the doctrine of God is and of Christ is. And that's why I'm going to spend three or four weeks teaching the doctrine of Christ because part of the problem is that some of you have been walking around here and you act like the Holy Spirit is an option. The Holy Spirit is part of the functionality of Christ. Amen. There's no way you can have have Christ in you and don't possess his spirit. There's no way you can sit here right now with the spirit of Christ in you and can't give Christ praise and Amen. shout thank you Jesus because God has been good to you. Amen. When you don't have Christ, you don't have his doctrine, you don't have him in your life, you won't shout amen. But if Christ has been good to you and shown up, bless you, every now and then you ought to just shout like you're Amen. driving down the street. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. What's wrong with you? I got the doctrine of Christ. Uh -huh. And in the doctrine of Christ, I got a certain spirit in me. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. John declared in the first John, chapter 4, great is he that is in thee, he that is in you than him that is in the world. Am I right uh -huh. about it? There's something so wonderful in you. There's a spirit or the teachings of Christ that says that he has put something in you that's greater than the problems that you're going through. Why do I get depressed? Because you don't have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. Why do I drop my head? Because the Spirit of God is in you. If you had the Spirit of God in you, he guides you in all truths. Amen. You smile when you feel like frowning. You get up when he tells you to lay down. And every now and then you shout, thank you, Jesus, amen. because there's a Spirit moving in you. Amen. That makes you can't control you. Y'all ought to say amen. Uh -huh. We look at this text, we'll find that the Bible teaches not Brother Hamilton, that without the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ, uh, he have not God, but he that abideth, that stays in the doctrine of Christ, he have both the Father and the Son. Amen. How do I find the church? Well, you'll find the church not because it's 5,000 people. You'll find the church not because uh, 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 you got good friends that go there. Uh -huh. You'll find the church not because they think like you think. Uh -huh. You'll find the church not because it has a choir. You'll find the church not because it has instrumental music. You'll find his church when you find his doctrine. Amen. No doctrine, Amen. no church. Y'all 
about to say amen. Uh -huh. so too many of y'all walking around here just looking for a pretty building. And got folks spending million dollars a year. So they attract the building seekers that walk around, I'm looking for a church home. Ah, uh, I'm looking for a church home. And, and the bigger the building and the crazier the teaching, uh -huh. you just start easing on up in there. You get up and they tell you some more silly stuff about, well, you ain't got the spirit of God until you speak in tongues. That's a lie, and that's not the doctrine of Christ. I'm going to write about it. Uh -huh, I, 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 I'm going to show you that. If you come back, I'll show you that's not the teachings of Christ. And, but we look for, for God in people, and, and we'll find that people are going to be people. And if uh -huh. you look for Christ in people, you show up in the world of trouble. Uh -huh. And the spirit of God will never show you Christ in people. The Spirit of God will show you Christ in His Word. Amen. How do you Amen. show up in the beginning? In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word was with God. Well, how did you show up? He said the Word became flesh and dwelt in us. Well, what dwelt in Him? Am I right about it? Uh -huh. But in the beginning was the Word. It's the Word of God. When you're looking for the doctrine of Christ, that you'll find the church of Christ. Amen. If you don't have the doctrine of Christ, you'll never find the church of Christ. And when uh -huh. you walk into a church, the first thing you need to do is find the doctrine and not your friend. Amen. Amen. That's why folk go into churches, been there 25 years and dumb, dumber than they were today than they were yesterday. Because they went in because it felt good. Mm -hmm. But how does it feel to have a life without Christ? I'm right to have it. It felt good to walk up in there. And there's something about false doctrine that feels good. I'm right. Mm -hmm. When somebody tells you you can sin and live like a ravaged dog all you want to and just do anything, whatever idea you come up with, that's God. And that feels good. I'm right about it. There's something about this text that says, whosoever abided, uh, whosoever uh, have the doctrine of Christ have God. And who's about not in the doctrine of Christ does not have God, don't feel too good. Because how in the world can I feel good when I don't even know what the doctrine of Christ is? Amen. My message to you is you ought to come to the church next three weeks so I can teach you the doctrines of Christ. You can get answers to what you're looking for. You can sit down and say, well, that's why y'all don't have pianos in. And that's why y'all don't call me in by electric titles in. And that's why y'all commune every weekend. And that's why y'all do what Amen. you do. Because it is found in the doctrine of Christ that Amen. Christ hung, bled, and died to establish. And that ought to mean something to us. Amen. Look very quickly. Because Jesus warned us of this stuff. It's not just in the book of 2 John 9. In fact, in Matthew chapter 16, if someone will get it from me, Matthew chapter 16, we'll find that wonderful passage of scripture that deals with uh, the doctrine of Christ. And we'll find that, that there's something said in Matthew 16 that we need to be uh, very careful of as we deal with uh, the doctrine of Christ. Uh, the Bible uh, says in Matthew 16, I believe it's, I, I, yeah, I'm in John, Matthew 16, uh, 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 verse number, I'm in Matthew, I, I got it, in Matthew 16, uh, in verse number 6, and I want you to read this all the way down to verse number 11, because there's some teaching in there, and whether Brother Brown or was reading, there's some teaching there that we bypass, because long before John warned about the doctrine, his apostles are already teaching about the doctrine. Yeah. And the reason why folk don't understand the church because folk don't preach doctrine anymore. They'll preach the death, burial, and resurrection but won't tell you what the death, burial, and resurrection mean. Mm -hmm. And then when you actually explore and you study what Christ's death, burial, and resurrection meant you'll find it had to do with the doctrine that was set up to establish the death, burial, and resurrection in the first place. Y'all all right? Y'all hear something about money and all that stuff. Uh, uh, but you ain't getting no something about money today. You get about the doctrine of Christ because you need God. Am I right? Amen. You came in here without God. You were sad. You were, you were miserable. You were frustrated. You fed the description and the adjectives in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. You were dead, lost in your trespasses and sin. You were in a dark place. You were struggling. You were trying to figure life out. But when you leave out you even illuminated with part of the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And if you keep coming back, it's the doctrine that's going to save y'all. I say, Amen. Amen. All right, now what does the Bible say? Uh, Matthew chapter 16. Somewhere. Yeah, let's go. Read. Then Jesus said unto, then Jesus said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? The leaven. Of the leaven. Now, Brother Hamilton, the leaven ain't doctrine. <laughs> he said, Beware of the leaven of who? The scribes. The and the Pharisees. Now the scribes and the Pharisees were the biblical teachers and the directors of that day. They were the lawyers and the transcribers of God's word. And, and, and since you said that doctrine has nothing to do with law but about the death, burial, and resurrection in this text we'll find that Jesus is not dead. That he's alive and well. If he's if he dead, he's talking. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> he, he said, beware. Jesus said, beware of the leaven of the scribes.
scribes and Pharisees. Bible, what is leaven? Let's keep reading. And, the, and they reason among themselves. And, and they reason among themselves. Now, read it like the preacher. Now, you, you bore him a sermon. You make the people get off the internet and listen. They kind of read. You got to read like, like you're excited about God's word. All right, now read it. I like to read it. And they, and they reason among themselves. And they reason among themselves, saying, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. It's because we, that, that, it's, it's something you start talking about doctrine. And, and you said something different. You say let trying to relate to them what you're teaching. Mm -hmm. They start thinking corner. Like right now, I'm preaching doctrine. And then Cornelius sets in and wondering wonder what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And instead of just saying, I don't know what you're talking about, you start grabbing something that I'm not talking about. Right. A amen. You start grabbing, well, well, you ain't one church, you ain't no better than nobody. I ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the doctrine is, is all you got. It's the best in everything. It's not a church, it's the doctrine. Amen. What makes the church the church is the doctrine. But you done picked up another loaf of bread. <laughs> all right, all right, read. All right, read. He said what? He said, which men, which when Jesus perceived, uh -huh. he said unto them. He said unto them. Oh, ye of little faith. Oh, ye of little faith. Why reason ye among yourselves? Why are you thinking among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. This corner stuff about eating again. Read. Do you not under you, yet understand? You do not yet understand. Neither remember the five. No, I don't remember the miracles that I've done. Read. Of the five thousand. Of the five thousand. How many baskets you How took? many just ate? They came and ate just to get full. Read. <laughs> Uh-huh. Neither the seven loaves of or the, the seven loaves and the four thousand read. How many baskets you took? How many baskets you took up? Read. How is it that you do not I, understand? In other words, do you not remember the last time you didn't have enough meat and bread? I'm the one brought the meat and bread in the first place. No. So if I'm talking to you about bread, I wouldn't be talking about bread about the eleven of the five the Pharisee. Couldn't be bread. Because everything you have, I've always supplied for you in the first place. Y'all missing this. Uh -huh. I'm I'm not, sometimes God's talking to you about something, and all you're thinking about is your belly and the cornality, and I'm trying to show you something through the life that you're living. In other words, you're going through some stuff in your life, and you don't have enough bread and money, but God said, I am the source of your money, uh -huh. and the last time you had some money, I gave you the money. Amen. Oh, I wish you had a uh, praying church. I need, I need five people full of Holy Ghost. We can go home. I need five people. Five people come out the tomb. We can go home. Amen. I need five people come out the tomb. We can go home. Oh, praise God. Okay. Right, now, now he's, 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 that's, that's an interesting point. How, how, do we, how do we pray to God like God can't handle your corner problems? Every, when you were up, God was the one that helped you be up. So when you down, you act like God not going to be the person that helped you up. Uh-huh. When, when, when I'm showing you something in your life, it's not that I'm concerned about you not having money or food. I can take care of your money or food. Uh -huh. My problem is you understanding who I am in your life. Amen. Amen. My problem is you understand the church that I died for in Calvary's cross in Matthew 16 and 18. Upon this rock, I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I shall give unto you the keys of the kingdom of God. And whatsoever that is bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. What shall, shall be loose in heaven shall be loosed on earth. You, the problem, you don't understand. I'm talking kingdom talk. You, I'm talking about the church and you're talking about fish and bread. Uh -huh. uh -oh. mm. Sometimes it's amazing. We'll pray to God about stuff we don't have, what we want to do. And God said, but you don't have me. Mm. You, you praying to me about, I'm talking to you, I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to communicate to you, and, and, and the only thing that I get from you is give me some fish and bread. And God said, but you don't have relationship with me. You haven't prayed to me and I don't have hope. Why reason amongst yourself? Do you think the stuff that I'm doing is a physical blessing? I'm trying to do a spiritual thing. That is establish the kingdom of Je the kingdom of Christ. That's why the Bible says in the book of Luke 16 and 16 that since the preaching of John, all men have been pressed into the kingdom of Christ. All men have been baptized. Men have been baptized into the church. How dare we let somebody tell you you don't have to be baptized. That is inconsistent with what Christ died for. Man. He died Man. in symbolic to represent the death and the burial and the resurrection and we too are baptized into the death burial and resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the doctrine of Jesus Christ Romans 6 and verse number 5 that life as Christ was raised up by the glory of the Father we too are raised up in a new life that henceforth we should not turn up sin drop down to verse number 17 thank God you once were the servant of sin but have obeyed that form of doctrine to lift up the form of what? of doctrine to live it under you Amen. You were saved Amen. because you saw and got the word of God. The doctor was delivered on 
of being baptized into of the body of Christ, but the Bible says Acts two thirty eight, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So not only do you get God the Father, God the Son, but you also get the empowerment of the Godhead in your life to lead and to help you through whatever times you face. But living a life without God. Whosoever that are transgressed and abide and not in the doctrine of Christ don't have the Father. They don't have the Godhead in their life. Uh -huh. And then Paul puts it, Luke puts it this way in Acts 14 and 22 that it's in Him that we move and breathe and have our very being. So if I don't have Christ, I don't have a way to move around this world. I can't breathe good in this world. My being becomes messed up. And the whole thing that's going on in my life is not the mistakes I made. It's not the trials I'm going through. It's that I'm doing it without God. Amen. God says in his word in John 15, I am divine. Ye are the branches. You abide in me. Amen. If you abide, how do I abide in me? Abide in the doctrine. Mm -hmm. Whosoever transgresses and abide not in the doctrine of Christ. I'm the vine. You about stay in me. Amen. If you stay in me, I'll take dark nights and make them into a place of sweet rest. Mm -hmm. God, I say amen. amen. If you abide in me, I'll take broke days and feed you like you're the richest person on the face of the earth. Uh -huh. Somebody ought to shout amen. amen. If you abide in me, when folk talk about you and laugh at you and ridicule you, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, Man. if you abide in me. Man. When death comes up on you like a sneaking monster and a, and, a, and a ooze up on you when you least expect it, I'll be your peace in the middle of the storm. Am I right about it? If you abide in me, whatsoever you will, I will give it to you according to my will. If you abide in me, one day you'll be able to lay down for the last time. Look across Jordan's River. Look back at Jericho's Road and see Jesus on God's side and be able to shout, thank you Jesus, I got over somebody out of shout amen. But you got to abide in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now watch me say, no, no, I'm through after this. He said, he said, what? He said, how is hey, that you reason amongst yourselves and not understand it? When I spoke of the leaven of the scribes and Pharisees, that I was talking about the doctrine of the scribes and Pharisees. As I come to a conclusion, I want to suggest to you, when you go to a church and you look at a church, you need to make sure that the doctrine that the church teach uh, being defined in our in language, uh, the belief system, what they're teaching, the diachi in the the diachi in the, the, the Hebrew, uh, the preaching and what they're preaching aligns itself with what's in the scripture. Amen. But most of all, you need to make sure your spirit aligns with the spirit of the word of God. Forget uh -huh. the man and the place, but you make sure your spirit is matching with the word of God. So when you hear something that's true, you can't help but shout amen. 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 And I write about it. Uh -huh. There's something about the word of God that when you hear it, you know it's soul saving that make you stand up and shout amen and get ready to amen. go home. But when folk ain't ready to go home, they just keep sitting in their chair. Amen. There's amen. something about the word of God when they're connected with the spirit of God that make them stand up and shout amen. amen. Oh, they say somebody ready to go home. Hey, amen. Right amen. Oh, yeah, am I right about it? Come back next week. <laughs> I'm going to show you the doctrine of Christ. He was telling them, be careful with them, what these church folks were teaching. I'm telling you, be careful what folk are teaching you. Amen. Don't you let somebody tell you that God accepts homosexuality and start smiling and saying, see that I told you. He need to show you. Don't you let somebody sit up and tell you that any church will do. They need to show you in the doctrine of Christ. I don't care who it is Amen. that any church will do. Amen. He said, now when they can't show you that any church will do, he said, what I need you to do is don't go into that church. Look at the text. He said, one come unto you and abide him not in this doctrine, bring him not this doctrine. He said, don't go up in that church uh, because any church won't do. Don't bid them into your house nor bid them God's speed. Because if you bid them folk God's speed, you become a partaker of their evil deed. Mm -hmm. What you mean, preacher? I mean that when you walk up there somewhere and they got pianos in there and you can't find nowhere in the New Testament, you need to start investigating where that came from. I mean, you walk in a church that don't have love. You need to. I don't care if it's this church. If the, if these if you're around a bunch of folk that don't know how to love each other, I wouldn't go to that church. Mm -hmm. I don't spend a lot of time getting folk to where I am until I know we we were we supposed to be spiritual for the basic stuff of Christianity, which Man. John is speaking of in First John, also Second John, Third John, called the Book of Love. That when when folk don't love each other. Uh, that is outside the doctrine of Christ. Man. And when you see a demon, if it's just one demon, just start praising God around you and run them off. 
<laughs> That's all you got to do. When you see a demon that won't give God praise, what kind of person won't give God praise? Uh -huh. What kind of person sit around and try to find fault in the church? What kind of person sit around trying to fight, fight the man of God? What type? That's a demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. And if enough good folk will stand up and shout, thank you, Jesus, that demon will find somewhere else to go spread his demonic paws. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And what you got to do when you see a demon, you ought to have a demon alert, demon alert. <laughs> I got three demons right here. <laughs> and, and them demons start looking because the Bible says in John chapter 3 that they hate the light because their deeds are manifest. Let me write it back. Mm -hmm. Every now and then you ought to look at somebody that ain't shouting at me and say, you know what? I want you to know, demon, I'm getting ready to give him praise. You ain't gonna like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few people here. I think I, I think I feel my shout coming on. Yeah. And I just want to warn you while you're standing here, I'm about to give God glory, demon. Now you be, uh, you can sit here and like, but we gonna shout in a few minutes. Yeah. And he don't say he keep looking, he dare you to shout. You gotta say glory, yeah. glory. Yeah. That demon get his Bible and start moving as fast as he can get something up, cause the word of God will draw you when y'all gotta say amen. Yeah. 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 Well, y'all be back next week. Will you be back next week? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You come back. We're gonna, gonna talk about the, the the preaching of false doctrine. We know the effect of false doctrine found in text that if false doctrine is delivered then God ain't in it. Uh -huh. And we want to look at what folk preach concerning the doctrine of God, the doctrine of Christ. And if it's not in the doctrine of Christ, a simple question is going to ask you, what should you do? If you're in a church and if you found that if one piece of that doctrine is not right concerning God, should you keep running around in that church? Mm -hmm. See, see, we didn't get back to preaching. We, we got so busy trying to do psychology and preaching and philosophy and socialism and culturalism that we stopped preaching the doctrine. And that's why folk don't know it. They don't know it because we ain't preaching. So I'm going to spend about three or four weeks pre preaching on the doctrine of Christ. Man. May God bless you. May God keep you. Here's, here's a doctrine of point. No one was saved in the Bible by a sinner's prayer. Nobody was saved in the Bible in the New Testament by simply touching the radio or saying, I feel just come in my heart. Just come in my heart right now. Just find a good church home anywhere you want. You go out there and find a good church home and just find a good Bible teaching place and you go in and you make your home and send, send your money to Joel Osteen at joelosteenmoneyrobber.com and you'll be all right with God. That's not word in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You can show me that in the Bible, I'll do it. <laughs> Nobody just said, come into my heart was saved. Mm -hmm. That's not the doctrine of Christ. We find that Walter Scott, is a, a historian, said, I'm going to go through the Bible and find out every time somebody will say what took place when they were saved. He came up with five things over different parts of the Bible of how people say that were consistent was the denominator. In other words, he, he found the hypothesis of his research to say that, that, that man was saved in the early church about these five principles that took place each time they got baptized. His value was not known, but it was confirmed as a possibility that every time somebody got saved, these five things took place. Number one, they heard the word of God. They heard the word of God, Romans 10, verse number 17. So then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's in the Bible. They heard the word of God. How did they hear? They heard from a preacher. How can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach except he be sent? He found that there was no one who was just walking down the street and a big foot stepped on them and they decided they were saved. The clock, my clock flipped over three times and I saw Jesus know you had a concussion. <laughs> that was the steering wheel handle sticking out and you had a concussion and you were so happy to be alive, you said it must be Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, and not only that, it must be Jesus. That was the police saying, are you drunk? And you got out and ran the church lying to them folk. I was in the wreck. I thought I flipped over three times. You might not believe me, and I don't. <laughs> and I looked out my window, and I saw Jesus standing there. Quit lying. You won't, you won't. Uh, amen, amen. Right, Number two, after they heard the word, they believed what they heard. And because they believed it, it resuscitated. And every time somebody believed, something happened. When people don't believe, nothing happens. Romans 10 17, so the faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. What after they heard the word? What happened? Mark 16, he that believe it. Mark 16 16, he that believe it. And this baptized shall be what? Saved. Shall be saved. He that believe it not, what? They ain't going to get baptized. Man. So if you believe what you heard, you come down and be baptized. Because that's what they did when they heard the word of God, according to the scriptures. Man. Jokes that don't believe, they'll look at you like you're crazy. Come be baptized. <laughs> talk, talk to I just got my hair fixed. And, 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 and let me say, some of your hair are bad enough that we need to take into consideration. And so that's why we give good rain caps put on your head 
Because we understand you got some bad hair. Amen. And then some of you got other people hair on your head that we have to make sure that you pay $900 per string uh, that it don't get messed up. And we, we, we appreciate We recognize that. And we will cover your weave up and your naps up and we'll baptize you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Is that all right? And no, there's no excuse. Here's another thing they found. Walter Scott said that I found I went through Jewish history, went through time, that everybody who was baptized had to do something. They, they couldn't get baptized and just keep on you know, sinning. Uh, they sinned, but they couldn't. They had to repent of sin. Mm -hmm. They had to repent of sin. Luke 13 and 3, Jesus said, Now I tell you, except you repent, you shall likewise perish. Acts 17, 31 says, In the days of ignorance, what ignorance? In the days of denominationalism, where there was a church on every corner, that's the English he's speaking of. If you study Acts 17, he is talking about Mars Hill, where all ep ep the Epicureans, who had all kinds of belief systems like we do now. They, they believed in that stuff, and they believed that any church would do just as long as you find a good church home. And, and he said, they just throw a church up, make a church anywhere they wanted to. He said, now in the days of those ignorance, God once weeped there, but now I command every man uh, to, to repent. And so they had to repent of false doctrine. They had to repent of sin in Luke 13 and 3. They need to repent of God the sorrow, uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, by verse number 5. Not to repent of, uh, uh, but to repent of a God the sorrow to God. They had to repent, they had to repent, and you have to repent also. Amen. If you're going to be saved. You hear the word, you believe, you have to repent of your sin. You have to confess him as the Son of God. Why do you confess the Son of God? Because no one, most of the people in the Bible, did not believe that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. The Muslims don't believe that Jesus Christ uh -huh. is the Son of God. Of God. The Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. There are folk that still don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The Mormons do not believe that he's the Son of God. He's another prophet. And folk are going in droves. But yet, the doctrine of Christ, I'll say that for next week, they don't believe he's the Son of God. Man. So he says, now listen, in Matthew 10 32, concerning this error in biblical content that I'm speaking of, whosoever confess me before men, I confess before my father. Uh -huh. The word uh, uh, that he uses, a uh, confession, whosoever uh, confess me as as curios, meaning master, I will confess him as doulos in Hebrew, meaning servant. So whoever confesses me to be the master, I will confess that you are my servant. Mm -hmm. But if you don't confess me to be master, I will not, I will not confess you to be my servant. So you can do all the stuff you want to concerning Christ, but until you confess that he is the son of God, that means until the Mormons, Jehovah Witness, and the Muslims all say that he is the son of God, they are lost, eternally lost. Why? Because they're outside the doctrine of Christ. Amen. Whosoever abide not in the doctrine, have not God. And Jesus said, if you can't confess me as the one, I will confess you. Mm -hmm. and they still went through. The last thing he found that they were baptized. Acts chapter 8, it's the unit, baptized. Stephen baptized. Philip baptized. Acts 8 and verse number 12. He believed the things concerning the kingdom of God. The church and Jesus Christ. More than just he's the son of God, but the kingdom of God represents the church and Jesus Christ. You don't just believe Jesus is the son of God. Do you believe that Jesus has a church? And if you believe Jesus has a church, you ought to be in his church. Not man's church. I hope I tell you to take it up in the name of Jesus.